that's kind of it's. I mean, I'm still bummed about this. I've probably been complaining to everyone I meet. I I haven't, and I keep wanting to. But you know, I'm, I'm happy to do the interviews. But it's it's so scheduled. They have us so scheduled tight that I don't even know if I'm gonna get the chance. Um, which is really bumming. There's more stuff probably here this year that I want to see than, than last year, and I'm missing out on everything. I keep hearing about other panels that are great. I missed the True Blood panel yesterday because I was doing an interview, and I would have died for that one. So it's kind of sucks. I feel like, uh, you know, I'm a geek, and I, and I want to experience geek, but I feel like a faux geek because I'm missing all the geek stuff. I'm just, like, here for the parties and the interviews. It's ridiculous. I play a lot of Battlefield Bad Company nowadays because Brian, who plays Lieutenant Scott, got me into that and he keeps trying to get me to, to play online with him. Look for him, he's probably kicking your butt right now. Uh, I'm still playing the old games that I haven't beaten yet. I'm still finishing uh, another round of Dragon Age. Um, trying not to hook up with Claudia Black on accident in that. Uh, Fallout 3 still playing, I, yeah, I'm a huge Rock Band fan. Uh, Lego Harry Potter is on its way, will be waiting for me when we're done with Comic Con. And then uh, just rebeating Lego Batman with all the villains too. I'm a huge 360 fan for playing, you know. I think it's best for online. Oh yeah. The, yeah, especially back in the Halo days. I mean, I spent countless hours when I should have been sleeping playing Halo. <laughs> it's scary, and I'm very lucky because uh, when I first got cast in the role, they immediately said when they were just talking to me about it, like, "We want Eli to be." the audience. We want him to literally be their surrogate, the hearts and the minds. They, he's kind of the roller coaster that they strap into for the ride that is SGU. And right away I was terrified. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure because best case scenario, well, that's just what happens. And then worst case scenario, they hate me and I'm not them and I screwed it all up. So if people are feeling that, if people are connecting to the character and or what he's going through and, and using him for catharsis, I think that's, I'm, I'd like to say it's the writers. <laughs> the writers, not me. You did, you did mention that there were 8 million Eli's probably walking around. The oh, there for sure are. Have you seen the red shirts? The yes. red You Are Here shirts? I yes. keep tripping out. I'm, it's freaking me out. It's like Inception meets the Matrix, like with all these clones walking around. <laughs> well, he, I, I think that season one especially was just such growth for Eli. He, he really did go from a place of, I hate to say slacker, but a, a place of... I'm not going to do it well, so I'm not even going to try. I'll let the professionals do it. And throughout season one, he started taking on more of that role and more of the belief in himself. And I think season two is, that's really what it's about. It's, it's beginning to trust his own stuff. And, and uh, there are some events that I won't, uh, I won't ruin for you, but things happen in season two that kind of start weighing on him and really you know, taking little, little chinks out of him every once in a while. And that's, that's going to get to the best of people, no matter what your sense of humor. Um, enough stuff happens, you're going to have a breaking point, and uh, we've seen Eli close to it a few times. Mm. Mm. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see a little bit more about his past, or at least about his relationships in the past. Um, they definitely explore that. They're, they're not done explaining who these characters are. I mean, the, the great thing about the first season of a show is you really get to introduce people to it. Um, so that's why you're seeing a lot of what was going on back on Earth and, and all that. Um, it's not gone, but there are so many more pressing issues in season two that uh, it, it tends to focus more on, on the here and now. Um, you'll definitely see more. It's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's kind of like when people ask me uh, why the entire episode isn't funny. Like, why are there funny moments, but why isn't the whole episode funny? And I have to point out to them, like, well, 99% of that, people were scared for their life. So if you're in that kind of situation, you're not going to flash back as much either, you know? It's, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, we're, it's a double-edged sword. It's, we're cursed and lucky at the same time. Um, we're lucky in that, unlike a lot of shows that are starting for the first time, you get that built-in fan base who are at least going to watch the first episode, or the first few episodes, or all of them. <laughs> you know, you never know. But it, you have a guaranteed beginning viewership. Um, and then it's also that many people who may or may not like this new direction. You know, it, it is... It's the reason we all signed on is because they were really pushing the envelope and they were trying something new. Um, they weren't trying to just make a, a sequel or make more of the same. Uh, so for us, that was, was exciting. And I think that's why it's gotten some new viewers as well. And hopefully not alienated too many others. I, I will say, um, I, you know, I'm, I hate spoilers, not because I hate to give them away. Mm -hmm. It's that as a fan, 
they piss me off. Like I hate when somebody tells me something that I'm about to watch on Lost because for me it's, uh, especially with sci-fi, it's all about shock value. Mm. So the more you're prepared for, I mean, the panel yesterday, I was surprised by how much they showed. I was like, ah, stop, yeah. pause, pause. <laughs> Um, so I actually asked Brad before before I did press recently, like some stuff that I could say. So this is all Brad Wright approved. Okay. Don't fire me. Okay. Um, first of all, you're you're not done seeing aliens that that you've seen um, for sure. Um, get used to them. But uh, and on top of that, there'll be more aliens, uh, and and not that far into the season, and not necessarily just one other group. This is big. Uh, space is big, and um, even more than that, we're in a place that no one's been before, so uh, you'll be surprised by look and attitude and whatever. It's, it's kind of crazy. I, looking back on it, I don't even think I could count the number of times that they had special effects people would show us something and they would just freak out. We explore a, a lot more of Destiny. We get a lot more of the, of the ship going, the universe, the, the things or people in the universe. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I 100% think they would. Now, I don't think Eli, this is just me, this is just me, ponder. Um, I don't think Eli would think he has the potential, but I think that's the best thing about the Eli-Rush uh, relationship, that Salieri-Mozart thing, because Rush sees in Eli all the potential, but he would never admit that. And Eli doesn't think he has any, and it's usually when Rush or Young or somebody prods him that he rises to that, at least so far in season one. Um, and I think that it, Rush is incredibly capable, and if he also had Eli's help, that's, there's a reason why so many times he kicks other people out of the room or says that I need Eli or whatever. It's because he realizes that help is going to make the difference. And uh, I think the two of them could figure something out. And then if you just stone in McKay, I think the three of them, done. They'd be back having margaritas on the beach in like five seconds. <laughs> But then we wouldn't be on the air anymore, so we don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, very cool. I just I wondered as a, as a fan if that was, you know, because especially with McKay, especially with the, I don't know if Danny Jackson's still around, but... Well, he's super spy now. I think he's too busy shooting and jumping and all that stuff. Exactly. No, I, 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 they're, I mean, I couldn't even gauge how brilliant all these people are, especially like McKay and Rush. We, we don't even know the full potential of Rush so mm -hmm. far. Um, so who knows, but the real question is, even if they could figure it out, could they do it? You know, um, Destiny is an old ship, uh, may not be what it used to be. It's hard when you're working the hours you do, I mean, it's very rare that we'll have days off, and when you do, usually you're trying to sleep. Um, and then other than that, we can shoot up to 16, 18 hours in a day, so it runs, it, you're hanging out with each other, so it's like you, Robert Carlyle, you know, Louis Ferreira, and, and Elise for an entire day for 16 hours, so they tend to become your family. Um, through them, I've met other people. Luckily, some of the cast is from Vancouver, like, or, or at least Canadian, Elise, Elena. So they have friends, and I've made friends through them who are other actors or writers or whatever, usually in the industry. But uh, you find yourself hanging out with each other a lot. <laughs> at the end of uh, season one, actually, we had just kind of a, a wrap-up meeting everybody, producers and actors, and Brad Wright uh, sat us down and said, guys, take this break. Don't hang out with each other. Stop going out. You see too much of each other. Please take this break so we won't have any troubles next season because they thought we were, we were that tight. We go see movies together. We go out uh, to bars together. We go hiking together. Like, it's really ridiculous. We've become this pathetically close family. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you as well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>